Good morning. Welcome everybody to Easter Sunday. He is risen. <laughs> Couple of announcements. Um, obviously we had breakfast and I'm sure it looked like it was wonderful this morning. Uh, there will be an Easter egg hunt after church. Uh, we ask that all the kiddos meet downstairs in the basement. Uh, you'll get divided up into groups. We have the Easter egg hunt kind of gets sectioned off by age. Um, so anybody little clear up through sixth grade is invited to participate. Sorry, you old people, you don't get to. <laughs> I'm included in that. <laughs> uh, Joyce asked that um, I remind everybody to please update the directory clipboard and also the birthday and anniversary clipboards. Um, they'll be out in the narthex. Just make sure everything is good or make any corrections that need done on that so we can update our birthdays, anniversaries, and church directory. The newsletter deadline is today. See Jared or Stacy if you have anything that needs added. Um, there are emails also in the, new, in the bulletin. Our beautiful Easter flowers up here. Um, you can pick those up after worship today. Please, yes, please come get them after so that we don't have to water them this week. Enjoy them at your home. There's going to be no Bible study this week, so that would be tomorrow. No Bible study tomorrow. Just a reminder, the annual Lakeville Chicken Barbecue will be May 1st, starting at 11 a.m. This is a drive-through carry-out uh, dinner. It's pretty good, so you wouldn't have to cook lunch after church Oh, it is by, yes, thanks, Jeff. It is by donation only, and those proceeds go to the Lakeville Fire Department. Uh, WZLP is now going to have new call numbers. Uh, I'm not sure when that has changed already. Does anybody know? Um, instead of 95.7, it's going to be 96.1, so your radio station, if you're going to listen to the services on Fridays, that'll be different. We're also starting up Luther League and Junior Youth, um, so we need some volunteers to help with that. So if you're interested, please contact John Pooster. I'm trying to get our young ones involved again. The scholarships uh, for St. John's, the application forms, um, deadline is May 1st to submit those. See Carol Enslow if you have any questions. And our local food pantries and Homeless, we're still collecting um, items for those in need. Those are listed in your bulletin. Any other announcements? Okay.
St. John Lutheran Church. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. It is good to be with all of you, both joining us on live via Facebook Live and FM radio, and all of you here in person. It's like a big homecoming. <laughs> Would you not agree? We can applaud for that. We give thanks to God for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to be able to come back together in this space uh, for Easter. And so this morning I'm going to go ahead and invite all of our kids to come help me unbury the Alleluia. So if you're a kid, come on up. Good morning. How are you all? Good. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I think we try it one more time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I have a question for you all. Pastor Emily has a really good, like, not great memory at times. And I remember a couple months ago, we buried an alleluia in this sanctuary, but I don't remember where it is. Does anyone remember maybe where it is? You think it's in here? Should we go check it out? Go ahead. Is it down here? There they are. Okay, hold on. There's a lot of them. Okay, hold on, we have to get a couple more here. Oh, watch, watch, watch. Pastor Emily might be too old to bend over here. Okay, so something you guys are going to help me with this morning. Lexi's going to hold these for me for a minute. Every time you guys hear the word Alleluia today, you're going to wave your banners, and you're going to wave them in your pews. And what's going to happen is during the gathering hymn, Lexi here, she's going to pass these banners out to you, and you're going to follow Lexi, and we're going to kind of do a procession with our banners. We're going to wave hallelujah. Again? Again, yes. You can never get enough hallelujahs. Let me tell you, because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so, Lexi, this is our way of saying praise God, right, for Christ's victory over death. And you'll hear a little more in children's time about that today as well. But I'm going to have Lexi hand out your banners. And Owen, can you put the lid back on this? I think it's down there. And Lexi, if you want to hand out those banners for us. Because this is a day of celebration and a day of joy, right? And so... You can never get enough alleluias in a service. Trust me, we'll be saying it. You'll know it so well by the end of worship today. And I'm going to ask you guys to just hang out here. You can turn around and face the congregation because Pastor Emily is going to read the gospel account and do the um, gospel acclamation here. You guys can turn around. Can you turn around and face the congregation for me? Remember when I said every time you hear hallelujah, what are you going to do? You're going to wave your banners, right? Okay. For the congregation, in your bulletins, you will find the Celtic Alleluia. Elaine will uh, play the last two bars of the refrain, and we will sing the refrain through once, and then I will sing the verse we will have the gospel reading, and then we will sing the refrain again.
chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee and there you will see him. This is my message for you. So he left the tomb quickly with great fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his seat, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lutheran Book of Worship 128, verses 1, 2, and 4. You guys go ahead and follow Lexi.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with our hymn of praise found on page 61 in our Lutheran Book of Worship. This is the feast of victory The congregation may be seated. It will be time for the children's time. Starting to peak as the guards on the hill were still. 
still fast asleep. When all of a sudden there came an earthquake and the rocks and the trees all started to shake. The guards rose up in fright and fell straight to the floor as the stone rolled away and unsealed the door. Then Mary arrived and crept up to the cave. She had to see Jesus. She had to be brave. But the cave was now empty. Jesus wasn't there. Mary sat down and wept. Her cries filled the air. But suddenly Mary heard someone behind. Dear woman, who is it that you hope to find? Mary jumped and turned round, so confused and afraid. Was this the man, the was this man the gardener? And why had he stayed? But the calm in his voice and the words that he said soon let Mary know that she had nothing to dread. Dear Mary, it's me, it's Jesus, your friend. My story's just starting, it wasn't the end. His eyes, how they twinkled, his smile so bright, Mary knew in a moment, but could she be right? She gasped in surprise and cried, Jesus, it's you. You came back to life, your promise came true. He was nodding and said, but there's more, there's no time to lose. You must tell the disciples, go, spread the good news. So she jumped to her feet, and away Mary went. She, she's a story to tell, a tale heaven sent. She ran without stopping and called through the door, Disciples, you've never heard this news before. Now Peter, now James, now Thomas, now John. I went to the cave, Jesus' body was gone. But he called me by name, he's alive and it's true. It's a miracle only our great God could do. Then the trees seemed to dance, the birds started to sing. All creation joined in the worship of the king. He's alive, he's alive, the rocks cried and praised. The whole earth rejoiced in this day of all days. When later that night Mary knelt down to pray, she thought about all that had happened that day. And the stars heard her whisper through the soft evening light. Happy Easter to all. Thank you, Lori, and thank you, kids. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Oh God, you gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever and the joy of the resurrection through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our scripture readings. The Old Testament reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build 
and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall live, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading comes from the first Corinthians chapter 15 verses 19 through 26. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, and then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom of God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. The parish choir may come forward.
This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb and taking the spices that they had prepared, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. And while they were perplexed about this, Suddenly, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. And then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You congregation may be seated. The handbell choir may come forward.
Amen. It's risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. This is our song in the 21st century. Often, as 21st century Christians, we say these words year after year without a second thought. So what we are saying or singing on this, the resurrection of our Lord. For many of us sitting here online and in person, this is all we've ever known. Christ's death and resurrection. This is the faith story that has been handed on to us from generation to generation. We've read the Holy Scriptures. We boldly proclaim as we come to the table in the Lord's Supper that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. We are washed in the baptismal waters of grace, of God's unconditional love and forgiveness as an infant, a child, a teenager, or as an adult. And then there are the saints among us who are in the church triumphant now, who have witnessed to the Christian faith and who have handed this faith to us. But let's be honest with ourselves for a minute this morning. I don't think any of us in this room are 2,000 plus years old. Anyone? No? Not lately, <laughs> Carla says. <laughs> None of us are first-hand witnesses to the resurrection of Christ. None of us here in this gospel reading this morning, both in Matthew and Luke, and the sermon today were greeted by our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, complete with the marks of his hands and feet and his side of his crucifixion and death. And if Christ were to show up here right this minute right, with all that, what might your reaction be? Anyone be freaked out by that a little bit? You might ask yourself, is this a dream, <laughs> right? Perhaps in this very minute, whether you are a new follower of Jesus Christ or a lifelong follower and disciple of Christ, you are still sitting here this morning on Easter Sunday wondering, how did this resurrection thing come about? <laughs> right? Is Christ really risen? Because when once again we hear these accounts, a part of it seems too good to be true. And if you're the person sitting in the pew or hearing this online or radio, it's okay to question it. <laughs> That's perfectly okay. Completely normal. Because when we take the death and resurrection of Christ seriously, Christ invites us to encounter faith and doubt. Even questions around his resurrection in the ears of an ordinary person. Sometimes it might sound like an idle tale. To dare to believe in the death and resurrection of Christ, it takes a leap of faith and courage to trust in something and someone greater than yourself that you've never seen but only have heard about. And to not only say yes to believing that Christ is risen, it's also, as Arland Hulkrun says, it is at the same time saying no to the power of death and resurrection death and destruction that surrounds us. In the place of the bad news we hear and the bad experiences we have, we make a claim as Christians that there is a sustaining power, God who brings life out of death and reconciliation out of conflict, as the Bible tells us. Can I get an amen on that one? Amen. I don't know about you, that's good news when I see what's going on in the world these days. When we consider the faith and courage it takes for us to trust and believe in Christ's death and resurrection 2,000 plus years later, without no physical proof or firsthand eyewitness 
from someone living in our generation. Imagine what these women went through this morning, right? Have you ever sit there and think about the trauma? These women who came to the tomb, they witnessed their Lord and Savior crucified on a cross right before their very eyes. They watched him die. And all they want to do is do what is custom burial. They want to prepare his body for burial. And they go into the tomb, and there's no body. I don't know about you, I'd be a little freaked out. Their expectations were turned upside down. And not only is his body physically missing, but in Luke's account, did anyone catch in the gospel reading, Jesus does not yet appear to these women. Did anyone catch that? He's not in the picture yet. There are two messengers, there's two angels, two men, right? They proclaim, they say, why do you seek the living among the dead? But imagine if you were these women, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and the other Mary, what you might be feeling or thinking or experiencing in that moment. What we get in today's gospel reading from Luke, more than a resurrection account, what we get is a discovery account to the resurrection. A gradual coming to or discovery of Christ's resurrection. These first disciples of Jesus Christ, these women mirror what most of us have experienced most of our lives firsthand. In the sense that faith is gradual, right? It wasn't like Jesus was right there in that moment. They had to hear the message from these angels who appear, and they take a leap of courage and faith to go tell the others. In a way, Christ's resurrection is a mystery, and Christ's resurrection from the dead is a cosmic confrontation between death and God himself. That death no longer has dominion in the worldly and earthly realm, for Christ is risen. But it's also what I most appreciate out of all the gospel readings about Christ's resurrection, because it's most relevant to us today. Right? Again, none of us were there firsthand, but we trust and believe. We take a leap of courage to trust with faith. And yet, through the messenger of God, it is revealed to these disciples of Christ. And I would like to point out, these are the first disciples of Christ who are witnesses to the resurrection of these women. They receive the message, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. It would have been easy for these women to stay stuck in their expectations and to stay disconnected from their experience of what they just witnessed. But instead, the Gospel of Luke tells us that they remembered Jesus' words. They didn't hold on to what was. They didn't hold on to their previous expectations. They simply lived by faith. Trusting in the good news that Christ is risen. And they left the room, right? They left and told the other 11 disciples. And what's the response from the other 11? Come on, what do they say? We don't believe it, right? <laughs> You're telling us an idle tale. They're making it up, right? <laughs> That didn't stop the women. They still went ahead and shared. Eventually, Peter goes and discovers the empty tomb with the linens. But I would like to point out, Peter wasn't as special as the women. 
because he didn't get any messengers. Did anyone catch that this morning? No messengers for Peter. <laughs> he just finds the empty tomb. And it says Peter went home amazed by what he experienced. What we discover in today's account in Luke's gospel is what we all experience every single day on this resurrection of our Lord. A gradual coming to belief in Christ's death and resurrection. Do we lean into trusting and believing that Christ's resurrection is God's victory over death embodied in Jesus Christ? Or do we stay trapped in the tomb with our nostalgia and memories of the past in the burial tomb and don't believe in the resurrection? As we are reminded every day, not just on Easter, every day, is a little Easter. A day in which God is making all things new in Jesus Christ and is conquering death. And that Christ's resurrection is not a one-time event that happens once a year, and then we forget about what God is continuously doing in Jesus Christ. But rather that God is making all things new in his creation in a cosmic confrontation where God is victorious over death in Jesus Christ. In the words of Reverend Nadia Boltz Weber, she says, it happens to all of us. I conclude that Easter Sunday morning, God simply keeps reaching down in the dirt of humanity and resurrecting us from the graves we dig for ourselves through our violence, our lies, our selfishness, our arrogance, and our addictions. And God keeps loving us back to life over and over again. And so on this Easter day, we stand with these women, these first disciples, who came to the tomb and were the first proclaimers of the mystery of faith that Christ has died and Christ is risen and Christ will come again. And we join with the saints who have gone before us, who are witnesses to the gospel that has withstood the test of human time and shared this good news with each one of us. Because look around this room for a minute. Somebody shared the faith with you, right? Otherwise, why are you here this morning? Right? You could be anywhere else. But you chose to be here this morning to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And as we gather as a church today, the body of Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we too are given the gift of faith to share and proclaim the good news with the generations present and those to come of Christ's death and resurrection as we boldly proclaim and live into God's unconditional love and forgiveness embodied in Jesus Christ. That Christ's resurrection is not some idle tale but as the very fabric of our beings as followers of Jesus Christ, as we boldly proclaim, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia, alleluia, amen. Let's take a moment of silence to reflect on God's holy word. Please stand for the hymn of the day, hymn 135 in your Lutheran Book of Worship, hymn 135, verses 1 through 3, the strength or the battle done.
Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make affirmation of baptism into Christ. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gift and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I ask you now to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. I, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I, I renounce them. them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? I, I renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give us a new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people now the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. We continue with the prayers of the church. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer up our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world, responding, merciful God, receive our prayer. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Merciful God, sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. Today we especially remember the people of Ukraine and people of Russia. We pray for your peace to come among, Lord, and for those still fleeing for their lives. Merciful God, encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way especially Wayne, Marion, Brian, Linda, and Larry, Linda, Harry, Ayla, Helen, Andy, Betts, Landry, Rachel, Fran, Jackie, Paul, TC, Gwen, Gaylord, Charlie, Keith, Kathy, Richard, Lenny, Sophie, Sharon and Steve, Vic and Susan, 
Veronica, Dwayne and Pat, Betty and Larry. Send us now as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Merciful God. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith with a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith, formation, worship, and discipleship. Merciful God. Holy God, you guide us to seek your will for our mission and ministry. Guide us now with your Holy Spirit, our call committee and church council members at St. John, as they work together to search for a new pastor to shepherd this faith community. Merciful God. Jesus Christ, you are the source of our life and very being. Watch and protect all families. Be with expectant parents as they prepare for the joy of birth of their child. Especially we pray for Kelly and Miles. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Jesus Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. Especially Karen, Ken, Bob, Don, Ken, and Leonard. Merciful God. We offer up to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also you. Share the peace of Christ with one another. this time the congregation may be seated we will continue with our offering and offertory
Amen. Please stand as we continue with our offertory response to doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise God, the Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and lamb to feed together in your peaceable sign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you now to go ahead and open up your communion cups. The first top layer has the bread. The second layer under that has the grape juice. I would ask that you not eat or drink of it until at the time I invite you to do so beforehand. We continue with the great Thanksgiving found on page 68 in our Lutheran Book of Worship. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is an aid, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away. People of God, come all is now ready. I invite you now to take your host. This is the body of Christ which is given for you. Amen. And with your grape juice, this is the blood of Jesus Christ which is shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. We continue with our post-communion canticle. God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from the table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all we all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Receive God's blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. We continue with our sending hymn, hymn 143 in your Lutheran Book of Worship, verses 1, 2, and 4. Now all the fault of heaven resounds.
Can we give a round of applause to our musicians for today? Thank you for sharing the gift of music um, in this service. Before I give the dismissal, I want to remind you there is the Easter Hague hunt that the kids have been looking forward to, right? So um, join us out on the front lawn for that. Have a happy Easter. Go in peace to share the good news. Thanks be to God. Happy Easter, all.